Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today I was going to do a tag video because it's Tag Tuesday and I have some tags I want to do that, wanted to do that kind of a backlog people have been nice enough to tag me in. Uh, but I watched a video uh, this morning of Sean D. Stanfast doing his top 10 short story writers and as someone who used to read a lot of short stories and really I have tailed off uh, recently, this just kind of really piqued my interest and made me automatically while he was going through his top 10. Uh, come up with my own kind of top 10 list. So I thought I would share that with you today in lieu of doing a tag because, well, it's what I wanted to do. So I want to, he had honorable mentions in his. Now, Sean didn't rank his from 1 to 10. I'm going to go ahead and rank mine from 1 to 10 based on kind of my my current reading. They may not, may not necessarily be top 10 all time, but I have my own system, which I'll explain to you in just a minute. But in addition to uh, having his top 10, I think Sean had like four others for honorable mention. So really it was kind of a top 14. So my criteria for making this list is that you have a story that you're a short story writer who I've read, I'm going to say uh, uh, at least somewhat substantial amount of your stories and at least one or more of your stories that really just blew me away. These could be stories I read a long time ago stories I've read recently. You know, I'm not saying these are the greatest short story writers of all time, even though I think some of the people on my list are. Sean's list was kind of, I think, weighted towards 19th century. Mine is going to be weighted more towards uh, the 20th century. So my first honorable mention I want to I bring up is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and the Sherlock Holmes stories. You know, we don't, I don't for some reason, I don't think of those as short stories, probably because they're mysteries, but they are, and we really should think of them that way. And you know, they've given me uh, quite a bit of entertainment over the course of my life. You know, they, I think he should definitely make the list, even though I've given away my copy of his of uh, the collected stories. Also, uh, similar to Sean's list, Edgar Allan Poe would be on my list. Uh, the Black Cat, The Cask of Amontillado, The Pit and the Pendulum, uh, The Telltale Heart, uh, Mask of the Red Death. Um, you know, all those stories are just great kind of gothic horror gothic -y stories, which I just thought, thought were great, and I really enjoyed uh, quite a bit. And then I also wanted to mention uh, somebody who's not actually a short story writer, who I've mentioned on my channel several times before, and that's Joseph Mitchell uh, and his collection of really um, essays that, that, to me, read like fiction, uh, which are called Up in the Old Hotel. Um, the more famous of these would be Professor Siegel um, and McSorley's wonderful saloon, but these are basically... Uh, stories about real life characters and places uh, in New York uh, during the 19, I guess, 30s, 40s, 50s. Mitchell was a staff writer for The New Yorker. Uh, that's essentially uh, his entire job, and most of his best works are collected here in this collection. I think they're just great, and to me, they read like fiction, even though they're not. So then on to my top 10. Remember, this is like top 10 based on Did You Write a Story, which just completely blew me away, which I just thought was great. Um, and, you know, is there more than one? And that's kind of what ranking is. So in my number 10 ranking, I put uh, Brian Washington, whose short story collection lot contains easily the best short story I think I've read uh, in recent memory. And that story is called A Leaf. If you don't know, uh, Lot's collection of stories is set in Houston, uh, near where I live. And they kind of deal with different neighborhoods and locations in Houston. There is some of the stories uh, follow the same characters and there's a theme to them. Some of the stories are not. A Leaf is not one of the stories that follows the main characters. And it really looks at an act of violence from the point of view of people who live in the same apartment complex in a relatively impoverished area uh, of Houston uh, or air community near Houston called A Leaf. Um, and so I just think that story is extraordinary. So I want to put Brian Washington on my list. Also, at some point a couple years ago, I read Laurie Moore's collection, Birds of America, which I thought was, was great. You know, what like is true with most short story collections, not all the stories uh, in here, you know, were great. But I thought uh, a few of them were. Uh, I think the best one for me was, oh geez. Yeah, people like that are the only people here, canonical babbling in Pedonk which basically uh, deals with uh, families who have kids in pediatric oncology, and that's great. Birds of North America is great. Just a really solid collection with, you know, stories that kind of stuck with me much longer than I thought they would. Uh, at number, what is this? Yeah, this would be eight, 10, 9, 8. At number 8, I have Carson McCullers' small collection, The Battle of the Sad Cafe, because it contains the jockey, and I just think the jockey is one of the greatest stories 
uh, you know, written in American literature. It, it's just subtle, it's short, uh, it's kind of brutal, um, it contains great characterizations. You know, I just think uh, it's a great story, and the other stories in this collection are good as well. Uh, I don't think, you know, one of the things you're going to realize is that a lot of my, be reminded of, not realize, be reminded if you've watched my channel for a long time, is a lot of my reading, uh, you know, for much of my life focused on kind of dead white guys. Uh, and so I have uh, quite a few dead white guys on my list here. Uh, Raymond Carver, uh, this is a collection where I'm calling from, which contains, you know, the incredible story Cathedral uh, and other great stories, uh, which uh, I haven't read this entire collection, but I've read most of the collection. I just think he was a great story, short story writer. You know, that was his form. And I think he is, you know, uh, like so far the, the other authors I have on my list, with the exception, I guess, of Brian Washington, his, his, his strength was in the short form was in writing short stories, and I, I think some of the stories are great, so I put him on my list. Um, I think a, not, a, an author who we oftentimes don't think of as a short story writer, but who I think is a great short story writer, uh, or was a great short story writer, is Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is his collection, Strange Pilgrims. Uh, I didn't want to get out uh, the copy of his stories that has my favorite story in it, which is A Very Old Man with Enormous Wings, um, because that story, that copy is kind of dingy, and and waterlogged looking. Uh, so I got out this much nicer one. Uh, Garcia Marquez was a great short story writer. I think this has something to do with the fact that he began his writing career as a journalist and he had uh, developed a real kind of talent and skill for kind of condensing emotionally powerful stories into um, short spaces. Uh, most of Garcia Marquez's stories are I think I uh, have a lot of symbolism, a lot of characters who represent things. I would say, and I've mentioned this many times before about Garcia Marquez, Marquez oftentimes chooses to use children as symbols of innocence and innocence ruined. And so there are oftentimes very disturbing things that are happening to children in his stories. Um, then, you know, I think probably somebody who would make the list of a lot of people's, you know, greatest American short story writers would be uh, John Cheever. John Cheever, again, somebody primarily known for his short stories. Great short story writer. Several stories in here that you may have heard of or know anything about. The Enormous Radio, uh, The Swimmer, uh, I think Sutton Place. Uh, they're just great stories. Now, Cheever, uh, kind of like, Cheever kind of wrote about middle class uh, white America. That's what most of the stories are deal with. But there's also uh, oftentimes something something a little bit fantastical. There's some fantastical elements in his stories, like with The Swimmer, uh, which I find really appealing. Uh, and then uh, one of the greatest short story writers of all times in American history, that is Eudora Welty. Sean, uh, the book maniac, and I attempted to read all the way through this collected stories of uh, Eudora Welty, and we did not make it all the way through. One of the things that's true about a collection like this is that it contains stories, or in, in this case, whole collections of stories written by the author at various points in their life. Now, to me, uh, Eudora Welty's best stories are the ones that kind of were in the first selection, the first two selections. Uh, uh, a Worn Path, uh, Why I Live the P.O. are just classic American short stories. And there are other very good short stories here as well. Some of her later uh, short story collections kind of pursued uh, themes or were interconnected stories. And to me, those are less appealing, but the quality of the writing and uh, the brilliance of the imagery is there, even if I don't particularly like the story. But they're just great stories. You're a great short story writer. And then my most haggard beat up book, this, believe it or not, is my collection of uh, Flannery O'Connery's The Complete Stories. Um, you know, everything that rises must convert, must converge. Um, a good man is hard to find her in here. Those are just great short stories. And there, there are very few short stories in here, which would not be great. If you're wondering what happened to my book, uh, My Dog Crash, who was like two dogs ago, uh, decided to chew up uh, one of my books. And this is the one he chewed up, and I've just kept it ever since. Uh, but Flannery O'Connor, great short story writer, uh, problematic uh, in her views on race, but her stories oftentimes, as I find to be true about a lot of authors, her stories uh, rise above uh, some of her own prejudices and uh, portray the world in a much more perhaps open-minded way than the author had themselves. And so if you know anything about me and my channel, you should be expecting that Hemingway is going to make an appearance, and he did it, indeed he does. Uh, the complete short stories on Ernest Hemingway, which I've read almost all but like the last two of the stories in here. This is the Finca de Vigia uh, edition, uh, and my favorite short stories of all time, Big Two Hearted River 1 and 2 are in here. The Killers, Cat in the Rain, uh, Hills Like White Elephants. I think Hemingway is at his best when he's writing short stories. Not that he didn't write great novels also. There are a few, but I think he's at best in the short form. 
uh, and his style, really that kind of uh, style that you describe as, you know, an iceberg where you only describe the top part that sticks out of the water knowing there's a lot more underneath. I think that's really un in evidence here. Uh, and I think this is where he's at his best. And then my absolute favorite short story writer of all time, one of the greatest writers of all time, William Trevor. This is a copy of his last stories, which were his last stories. And from the beginning of his career to the end of his career, William Trevor wrote, I think, some of those beautiful, powerful, emotionally impactful, subtle, humane uh, stories of anybody ever. Great Irish uh, writer, uh, great stories. I have his, you know, collected stories, which contains all the collections that came up to a certain point. Uh, I have several other, I've heard lots of Trevor's uh, novels, which are short, but uh, William Trevor, greatest short story writer, I think, in the English language, at least ever. And so I wanted to put him at the top of my list. Anyway, there you go. They're my top 10 short story writers, at least of right now, <laughs> maybe of all time. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below and any suggestions for other short story writers that you have. Look forward to those too. Anyway, thank you for watching.